Hi, my name is Stefan Schippers and I am the developer of Xkeem. And in this video, I want to show you how to do an analog simulation with Xkeem. I will spend a couple of minutes here uh, explaining how to install the various needed tools and then uh, we will start straight on with the design process. Okay, first of all, you need to find the uh, Xkeem, just write Xkeem manual in a search uh, engine and you will find it uh, on SourceForge. The, we have an online documentation on Xkeem and specifically if you go into the tutorials there is a specific item Xkeem and Skywater 130 integration and this page explains all the steps needed to install the tools. We start with Xkeem, the install instructions are here if you want to install from GitHub, we just need to clone the repository into our computer, like this. It's, it's not very big, so it will be quite fast. And uh, after downloading uh, Xkeem, we will compile Xkeem X -key, X and install the, the tool. Okay, so we can jump into the directory. and run the configuration. This is everything I do here uh, is explained into the manual page. So I am using now this prefix uh, to because I want to install in my home directory. But if you if you don't specify this, the, the tools are usually installed in USR slash local. Okay, but I, I want to install the tool in my home directory, so I run this. This proce procedure checks all the need libraries, so it verifies if TCL is installed, NTK is installed on the computer, if uh, the Cairo library is installed, and various other tools. If everything is okay, you, you may start to compile. I specify J4, so I will run a parallel make on four processors. It's very fast to build the scheme, so we don't need to wait too long. Okay, and then install. Okay, Xkeem is now installed. After installing Xkeem, you need to install OpenPDKs. OpenPDKs is the is is a collection of tools, libraries, spice models, everything you need to do simulation including analog simulation uh, with Xkeem in this case. And uh, <clears throat> before installing uh, OpenPDKs, you need to install the magic VLSI layout editor and the instructions are here. So just, it's very easy, it's not difficult at all. So follow the installation instructions here and you will be done. After installing magic, you ma may also want to install ng-spice. And the process is explained here, so it's also very easy. Remember, if you want to enable ADMS, you need to install the ADMS tool. If you are using Debian or Ubuntu, this is the command. So these basically are the process, uh, the commands to install ng-spice. So after installing uh, Xkeem, Magic and ng-spice, you can go with OpenPDKs and also I have collected here all the commands I have done to install OpenPDKs. OpenPDKs is quite a big uh, tool, takes uh, quite a long time to, to build and uh, also a lot of disk space, so ensure you have a lot of uh, gigabytes free, if 20 or 30 gigabytes for the installation. And after installing you can remove the, the source files if you need to free up some space. Okay, that's all for the, the tools. Next, after installing a scheme and GSPICE open PDKs, you can create a test directory. And go into the directory. We need to copy the Xkeem RC file we have now in our open PDKs installation. PDK, Skywater, A, um lips tech scheme scheme rc 
So we have created one directory here. We have copied this xkeymrc file. And if I now start xkeym from the command line, and maybe I just want to you also use a specific resolution, this one. This command here sets the initial size of the, the window so it fits uh, the recording uh, window. And this is what I get. So this is the Xkeem. You, you see the this is a welcome page with all the Sky 130 devices and all the ser test examples. And this is the first step. So we have now a working set of tools. You also may verify ng spice starts from the prompt so we have in ng spice installed so we are all set this is the first part just about installation and now we will go on with the design procedure okay for the design we now start x scheme and we open an empty page and we start inserting elements our goal today is to design a comparator and this comparator must detect a differential signal as low as one millivolt and as you probably know one millivolt is a very small quantity and uh, normal statistical variations prevent um, a comparator to detect such a small signal unless you do some specific compensation out of zero out of zeroing uh, technique or, or similar anyway this is our requirement we must operate at 1.8 volt at uh, extended temperature range and we and this is very important we must simulate with device mismatch because mismatch is the killer uh, the killer thing in this kind of design because we need to detect 1 millivolt and also the circuit must be self calibrating so no external trimming no testing uh, no trimming has been is to be done simply that the device does some calibration initially and then uh, senses the signal and for this tutorial we require very slow operation so we are not pushing like here we are not pushing a uh, fast operation so we keep one mi microsecond calibration one microsecond sensing and also the requirement for the current is somewhat below 50 microamps okay this is our design design goal okay we can start inserting some components so if you press the insert key or shift insert you can start inserting elements first of all the devices directory in xkeem is the the, the library with the the standard components like voltage sources, uh, uh, net labels, pins, all stuff that are which is process independent. Okay, first of all, I will insert a title because I like a title in my designs, like this. Okay, and uh, I need to add uh, s some pins, so we go down here and we start inserting some input pin i pin here this one and uh, for sure this is a i will start uh, designing an operational amplifier a transconductance amplifier so there is a, a plus signal a positive let's do it uh, uppercase which is more better readable then you can press the c key to copy and create another pin and we name this minus okay these are the two differential inputs of the operational amplifier then we have also of course we'll have a vcc supply i am also using the the c key to copy okay and vss okay these are the two supplies and let's say we else also have uh, an ena enable bar active low this is an enable signal so if enable is high the whole circuit is switched off no current consumption and as 
will become short. Uh, it will become uh, clear later. We have an ad adjust pin. This is a pin which is used to adjust the, the offset of the um, operational amplifier. This will be clear uh, later on. And also there is an output pin, so O pin output, this one. And this is the output we call the output of this out. Okay, this is the output. Of. So this is the interface to our of our comparator. Next, we start putting some uh, components. So we now we go into the the process specific library. Uh, so Sky 130. Sky 130 FDPR. This is the location of all the components. So we go by inserting a PFET transistor, 1.8 volt. This one. This one here. And then we need another couple of. Pfets we are new for the differential pair. I, I will use a, a, a low threshold LVT. This one, so one here, and now I copy this one with the C key. And by Shift F, I flip horizontally the, the transistor so I can put, put another here. Okay, and next I need the uh, two and channel transistor. I will be using uh, LVT as well for the current loads. Let's see. And fed 1.8 LVT, this one. So we put one here, copy, shift F to flip, and one other here. Okay, I now wire up. With the W key, I add wires. If you press this space bar, you can change the orientation like this. Press W again, and you start another segment, and you are done. Okay. This one. These are connected as diodes, like this. I can also, by dragging the mouse, I can copy. And by pressing the shift key, I can add some segments. I can copy this whole thing, shift F to flip, and here we go. Okay, next, ground connection. Okay, I want to put a net label here, so I go again into the devices directory here and set look for lab label pin label pin here and i call this vss okay and uh, the upper part here is connected to vcc so i can take this one copy c key here press the q key to edit the attributes and change the name VCC okay here we go this will be the minus input so wire and copy you see by double clicking you can edit the attributes or if you select and press the Q key you can do the same so double click is faster And also you can close the dialog box by clicking outside into the drawing area like this. This is very useful for fast uh, editing. You select these two elements, copy, shift F, and here you go. And this is the plus input. Click outside. Okay. And this one is the enable signal. So copy, wire here, and enable and so this is the input stage next we need to edit the the dimensions so uh, i forgot also to wire to wire the 
the substrates okay I, I can copy shift F set this one to VSS select these two elements you can select multiple elements by pressing clicking on one press the shift key click on the second copy C key shift F flip copy and in place okay you can also do this uh, you can do this select this tool copy again and put here so you are wiring the you can use the mouse wheel to scroll up and down to zoom in and out and this will be VCC VCC copy flip and here we go I think all the transistors are now wired up correctly we need to side oh so I'm missing a, another one here oops copy here we go I now need to set the dimensions so since these transistors are uh, identical I can select one press the shift key select the other and press now the Q key and set the W to 2 and the length to 4. This is, analog, uh, is an analog device so we need to use uh, large ge geometric dimensions to reduce mismatch effects. Okay. You s oh, sorry. When you do this and select and change the dimensions like this 2 and 4 I forgot to mention select this one this will ensure only these two attributes will be updated in the two select in the two selected symbols nothing else even if different or identical doesn't matter will not be changed it's always good if you select multiple elements to set this attribute here this uh, checkbox here okay 2 by 4 and the input stage oops let's clear this one okay the input stage needs to be quite big so we set a W of 8 and the length of 2 here we go and uh, the switch transistor here needs to be very conductive so we keep the minimum length uh, sorry no this is a, a current a current bias bias so we need to set a very long uh, length so set l to 8 for example and uh, w to 2 okay i think we are all set so this is the input stage i will then go on with the, the output stage uh, and uh, I add then some uh, calibration okay I have added here the output stage basically I am mirroring this current on the upper side and mirroring this current in the lower side and this is the output stage this is basically a OTA transconductance amplifier where the output is driven by the difference of the currents in the two branches of the differential amplifier as you can see all the inputs are used if you if you press the N key you will be doing a net list and if you bring up the ERC window you see there is an open net meaning it, this net is not used but this will be added later on so we don't care about this now you can generate a symbol for this first of all save your your work so save as and we will saving into our test directory here and we will save this as uh, opamp it's just uh, opamp it's enough for us okay here we go and next make symbol from schematic yes we want to do 
And if you now open into our directory, the symbol has been created automatically from our schematic. So we have a plus, minus. We can rearrange the, the symbol to look a bit better. For example, we can put all these input pins here. And we can move this here and the output, we can move the output in the center. We can remove this and make this look like this. Let's see. And we can move. Okay, not very nice, but it's enough for our purpose. All right, save. Okay, now we have created a schematic, a symbol, and now we go with a test bench. So in the test bench, press the insert key and press home, go into the test and insert the symbol we have just created. Okay. Then shift insert, we insert the title. We, the least recently used the symbols we have just added are available here. So we can add the title. One thing I didn't mention, if you want to move, you can press the middle the middle button of your mouse and you can move your schematic. The mouse wheel will do the zoom and that's, that's uh, easy to move around. Okay, there is a, a wiring tool in Xkeem. If you select the component and press the Shift H key, you will be adding labels to all the pins automatically. This is very useful if you want to create a test bench. Okay, so we are now we are, and now we want to save this, save as, and we call this test bench O pump. Here we go. So we have created a, an op operation amplifier schematic, a symbol, and a test bench using the symbol. Okay. Next, we will be set, we will be setting up the simulation and uh, doing some more work on this. Okay, we are now missing uh, one feature in our differential amplifier, which is the compensation uh, circuit. I have uh, it already available in uh, another scheme window here, so we I will simply copy this in our test circuit. If you have multiple, if you open another Xkeem instance somewhere, you can copy from one window to the other. Just press the C key and there you go. Okay, I've added this compensation network. How does this uh, work? Simply the adjust pin, press the K key to highlight the net, goes into this pseudo inverter here and we'll add or subtract some current from this branch. So I can add a positive or a negative current into this node and this can be used to cancel the input offset due to mismatch of the differential amplifier as we, as we will see in a moment. Okay. I did not mention some uh, editing feature of Xkeem. For example, if you press the control key and drag a rectangle in your circuit, and then you press the move key, you can stretch the circuit. You can change the, if you press again M, you can enlarge. You, this can be very useful to create room for uh, adding more circuit inside the, cir inside the circuit. For example, you can select this rectangle here by pressing the control key you you go into a stretch editing mode so 
do it again Control key drag a rectangle select and if you press Control and shift you can add some components and if you press the m key you can move if you press the h key you move uh, you are constrained to a horizontal move if you press the v key you are constrained to a vertical move in this case i press the h key so i can make the circuit a little bit larger for example like this i can press ctrl drag a rectangle and move this a bit closer like this here we go so i can move this a little bit here to the right okay this was one editing command i did not mention before okay we have uh, our block is basically done so i can go up and uh, again how do we use this compensation network i have already a sample here we basically use this network here so we copy into our circuit and also we need to from a start input we need to create a, a start negated signal so we insert and we start looking into our test directory here there is a, a not let's see this is an inverter so we can use this one to generate the start end signal given the start here we go so our test bench will have We have to drive the start signal, the plus, the minus, and the enable signal, and the supply voltages. Now, I, I, you, can, you can drive all these signals by inserting voltage sources. For example, if you go here and place a V source like this, you can set the value, the lower value to VSS, the upper value to VCC and you can set the value for example 1.8 whatsoever you can uh, add any expression here for example PWL with many values and so on but this is probably taking too much time if you have a design uh, which is not trivial like uh, this so i use another function which is available in scheme is basically a stimuli edit a spice stimuli editor which is this one i can start by a template i set voltage to vcc vcc will be a spice param expression we will see it in a moment we use a very simple uh, there is a help available with all the explanation of this language it's basically a, a program that converts a stimuli description into a spice pwl uh, format since spice pwl is not very useful for complex uh, stimuli generation we are using this uh, description here and uh, I will add the text here and then explain what I'm doing, okay? Okay, I have added the necessary text into this win dialog box. I can create some parameters, just numbers, and begin file sets the name of uh, translated spice file that this tool will generate when pressing the translate button and this is a file that needs to be included into a spice uh, simulation we'll see how we'll use this later so i set vss to zero vcc to one one is a logical one and is set to vcc 
and this is here is the spice parameter so it will be at the end 1.8 volt but we will keep this as a parameter because we will want to use variation as well as uh, for the all the other parameters okay so we set vcc to one we set enable to one initially so the circuit is disabled we set plus and minus to v common v common which is 0.6 volts and so on we set start zero then we move on 100 nanoseconds because the format is nanos here so we move forward 100 nanoseconds and then we set enable n to zero which means switch on the circuit and we wait for some equalization time we set start to one the start signal is used uh, here the first step where start is zero will short the output sorry i will keep this negated because later on we also adding uh, an inverting buffer here so so we short the output of the differential amplifier to the adjust pin so we while the plus and minus are both at the same at the very same voltage because they are identical here so we use the initial step to cancel out the offset of the differential amplifier okay and later on here we add v delta to the minus input v delta is a very small quantity is one millivolt so we offset one millivolt at the input and we want to see the output amplifying the input differential signal okay so we set a signal at the input we wait for the evaluation time we set minus one here to compensate this uh, one uh, increment in simulation so we we are keep our time very aligned uh, a multiple 100 nanosecond boundary so it's very nice to see in the graph okay when we reset the input to differential to zero we start over again with equalization and then we do a, an, another sensing with a positive value so lower negative delta to the input differential okay translate and that's what we want to do now okay what would else do we need we need to add we are in the in the top page in the welcome page there are available this symbol here you can control c to copy and you can go in your test bench and you control v to paste and this is the component which loads the models the spice models okay and we are using typical and mismatch because we want to run a mismatch simulation and also we need to copy to insert a code block so we use code this one okay yeah and we call this uh, stimuli this is now empty you can use also shift q to bring up your favorite editor to edit this uh, command i already have a copy of all the commands needed to run the spice simulation so i do a copy paste like this what are we doing here we set some uh, spice options integration method this is always advisable to put in, in your test bench we set some variation parameters to for the vcc and as well as the temperature so in this simulation we are varying temperature uh, the supply voltage and also all the transistor parameters because we are using the tt mismatch corner process corner and this is our simulation loop it uses dot control i'm not going into all the details of the spice control language you can see all these uh, inputs in uh, the spice user manual basically we are looping 100 times we do 100 different simulations 
and uh, we write our results, we append the simulation results into our output file, which is in our case TB opamp. Okay. So if everything is okay, we can close this. And also, as I mentioned before, we need to include this file here. So we go here and we need to include stimuli test bench opamp, which is generated by the Xscheme stimuli generator. Okay, so we are including the resulting file here and I hope everything is correct. So we can do a net list and then simulate and we will. Okay, we can run a net list. This dialog box tells we have some undriven signals, but because we have not placed pins for this signal, but we are driving driving these signals with our test bench here so we don't care about these warnings and we can run the simulation it this will take a minute to complete because we are running 100 different simulations in the meantime i can add a graph a bunch of graphs here two and three And we can also add a waveform loader launcher here. So when ng spice completes shortly, we can load the waveforms into a scheme. Let's see. Okay, we are done. Load the waves. This is actually a toggle, so if you click once, you load, and if you click twice, you unload. And if you double click in a graph, if the waveforms are loaded, you see this configuration dialog box. Anyway, if you select by staying close to the inner box of the graph, you can click a net, press Alt G, and the net will go into the graph. You can click another graph, and you if you have uh, highlights, highlight nets here, you can do shift K to clear all the highlights. You can click the plus signal, alt G plus will go into the chart and you can click minus alt G and it will go into the chart as well. If you zoom, you will see, and if, if you, if you press F while in the middle of the graph, you do a full zoom on the X axis. If you press shift and use the mouse wheel, you can zoom on if you, without the shift key, you can drag the mouse and move the waveforms either horizontally or vertically. So anyway, this is the input. You see only one millivolt offset, positive and negative. And uh, this is the, our output. You see the output you can also add the adjust so we click this graph again click the adjust pin alt g and so we are also adding the adjust pin and as you see if you zoom out you you see the output goes the, the output of the differential goes low or high depending on the input and we can also add here let's see the the vcc for example if you set here vcc okay you see also we are also having variations of the vcc so every run has a different vcc needless to say every single if you, you can press it the T key to isolate only a single run. So if you and you see the closest waveform, for example, if you wanted the, the lowest one here, press the T key, you isolate only one single run. You see, depending on the input, the output will uh, move in the same direction. So 
in every single run the amplifier is able to sense one millivolt input this is a very very low signal to to detect to, without doing any um, trimming of the circuit and this is happening with uh, vary, varying temperature and vcc because if you look into inputs we are using a, a variation on the temperature with a gauss cyan distribution centered at 40 degrees with one sigma of 30 degrees centigrade and as well as vcc we are using a one sigma 50 millivolt on top of the uh, average 1.8 uh, volt variation okay so uh, last addition of to this circuit is to add a gain stage since the you see the output swing is not enough to be fully detected by a logic uh, circuit because it's it's still close to the the to the middle point so we want to amplify a little bit and we saw we adding a, a gain block and we will see what happens. So this is the gain block. I have already created this. So we move this label away. We put a wire in between. Since I don't want to see this overstrike, I will change the lab pin to lab wire just moves the text a little bit above the, the wire so it's nicer what is this main stage gain stage is another pseudo inverter here so it takes the input and amplifies to the output and again it also has a calibration stage so during the calibration the output is kept at the maximum gain point so regardless of the input level the output is kept at the maximum uh, trigger point of the invert of this pseudo inverter okay okay let's see another thing you can do in this graph if you want to change the order you can put adjust before so you better see the output diff out over the adjust level okay i have uh, added the gain block i think we can run simulation again so i will add the out signal and we change the color to yellow let's say okay it's not available right now because i need to wait for the simulation to complete and after completing the simulation we can reload the wave by pressing twi twice this launcher here. Let's save the result in, in the meantime. I think we are almost done. okay complete so by pressing the control key and clicking this launcher i will unload the, the waves and reload the waves and if you do if i do a full zoom you see now the output is equalized before sensing then the output goes high when the input is high the differential input is high and will go low when the differential input is low and as you see the swing of this out signal is much better than the diff out signal okay and that's completes our simulation we can add if you click a graph you can press the c key to copy you can add another graph uh, for example i want to see e the vcc the current the overall current of the circuit go here press f to zoom and you see 
the current consumption is between 10 and 30 microamps, so we are within our specs. And this completes the, the simulation of the circuit. You can do many more analysis, operating point, uh, DC, AC analysis, whatever. But this is just an example how to do analog simulation with X scheme. And this is not a trivial example. This is a, a comparator which with self calibration able to detect one millivolt and uh, sensing correctly the, the one millivolt input in either, di either direction. Thank you.